welcome back to my channel. My name is Shanika E. And today I'm going to be doing some DIY home goods dupes for you guys. If you're looking for a channel that's going to bring excitement and good taste to thrifting, this is it. I focus on creating a luxurious home on a budget using thrift store items. If that's something that you're interested in, please think about hitting that subscribe button if you enjoy the content. All right guys, let's get right into the video. I'm starting out with this Sarah Brooks inspired painting. So what you're gonna need is a canvas, some spackle and a spackling knife and the colors of your choice. So I am using the spackle, spreading it out with a very light hand. You wanna use a light hand because this is going to give you more texture. Now I'm creating this line, sort of like a line of demarcation, so to speak, to separate the two stark colors that I'm going to be using. The goal is to create a beautiful piece of art that has a lot of dimension. So what you see me doing here is adding some baking soda to the white paint. The baking soda is going to give the overall painting some texture, but it's also going to take the shininess away and so that it looks a little bit more matte. I'm going to give the top part of my canvas one coat before moving on to the bottom portion. After adding my initial first layer of the white, I'm going to move on to the bottom portion of the canvas and I decided to apply this with a paintbrush. Once again, as I'm going to say throughout the video, I'm going for a lot of texture. So I found that using a different tool other than the roller brush to give me a little bit more depth. After completing the bottom portion with my paintbrush, I picked my roller back up and went in with a second coat of the white paint. I'm so sorry guys, I thought my camera was rolling, but it was not. So what you guys missed is I added a transition color on top of the spackle that we put down. The transition color is a simple gray color that I had underneath my cabinet. So I used that first. And then I went in and combined the black with the gray to get this darker gray color that you see me applying here. I'm applying this using a stippling motion but I cannot take all of the credit for this amazing texture that you guys are seeing. The gray paint that I had underneath my cabinet was very old. So the paint had a lot of like clumps and thickness to it, which helped. I originally decided to use a gold paint to frame out my painting because it was most similar to the Sarah Brooks painting. However, once it dried, I was not a fan of the gold. To me, it kind of cheapened the look. So I decided to go back over it with the gray that I was using before and I liked it much better. What do you guys think? For my second DIY, I decided to recreate this Pottery Barn lamp. Now I picked up both of these lamps from Facebook Marketplace for only $20. Yes guys, $10 each. They were so large, so substantial, and very well made, and I knew I can create something with them. I'm starting off by giving both lamps an even coat of the same white paint that I used for my first DIY. I am using a paintbrush to apply this because I like the lines and like texture that is left behind from the bristles on the brush. It's gonna make it easier for me to line up this sort of pattern that I am creating with the bristles. After painting both lamps in that stark white color, I'm going to immediately dip my brush into this cement mixture that I mixed up off camera. Now I'm only going to dip the very top of the brush into the cement and I am going to go right on top of that wet white paint. The reason it is important to go in while the paint is still wet 
this because you're going to get both of these very different um, materials to combine and become one and that is going to help with the smooth yet very apparent texture that you're going to have once both of the lamps dry. Here you can see what I was talking about when I mentioned earlier that I was going to use the bristles on the brush kind of like a pattern. So you see me matching up where the bristles stopped and continuing on with that same pattern as I go along. Hopefully that visually makes sense to you guys. I recommend that you allow these lamps to set for a good 36 hours so that the paint and the cement can adhere together. My third and final DIY is going to be recreating these beautiful home goods frames. Now, the frames were not expensive. They were $39.99 each. However, they were very simple and I knew I could recreate them at home. Luckily, I went to the thrift store and I was able to find both of these prints for $4.99. I'm going to be applying one coat of this Rust-Oleum. It's kind of like a champagne gold color to both of the frames. And then I'm going to allow that to sit overnight. After the frames completely dried, I went in with some white paint to cover up the existing print. Once your frames have dried, you can then apply your spackle. Now, I apologize for the fuzziness of this clip, guys. I got up extremely early and I forgot to clean my lens. Anywho, you're going to apply the spackle the same way I suggested in the first few clips, which is using a very light hand. I'm applying the spackle very randomly for a more effortless look. Instagram, I would love to see them. See you all in next week's video.